Hey guys, welcome to my video on total revenue, marginal revenue, and the choice of quantity for a monopoly. Uh, what I'm going to do, is I'm going to fill out this table. And we're going to show why that marginal revenue equals marginal cost rule your teacher talked about. Uh, we're going to show why that's actually a thing. So first, let's fill this thing out. I've already put the cost information on there. We've also got this demand schedule on the left, each price linked with a certain quantity. Now, total revenue is price times quantity. So for our, if we produce zero at a price of 10, zero times 10 is zero. Go down a row. If we have a price of nine and we sell four things, we'll make $36. $8 for eight things is $64. Seven for 12 is 84. 96, 100, 96. Right, so this graph has this sort of total revenue curve. Now it's very common uh, for the total revenue curve to go up for a while and then to go back down. And if I'd built the schedule a little differently, I could have made it exactly mirror all the way down. Let's look at marginal revenue then. Marginal revenue is the change in total revenue over the change in quantity. So we don't calculate it for the first row, but when we increase our quantity from zero to four, the change in quantity is four, the change in total revenue is 36. 36 over four is nine. Each of those first four units produced generates about $9 of revenue. Then, change in total revenue from 36 to 64. 64 minus 36 is 28. The change in Q was 4. 28 over 4? 7. Each of those is bringing in $7 of revenue. A quantity of 8 to a quantity of 12. The revenue rose from 64 to 84. The change in total revenue is 20. The change in quantity is 4. 20 over 4 is 5. And so on. I'm going to take this all the way down the line. A couple of things to point out. One, if you have a straight line, like if the quantity is always jumping by the same amount and price is always ticking by the same amount, then your total revenue will always move by the same amount. In this case, it's dropping by two every time. Other thing to point out, marginal revenue starts steep, it's high, and it gets lower and lower and even goes negative. If you look at the shape of the total revenue, it was jumping by a lot. And then it was jumping by a lot, and then by some, and then by less, and then by a little bit, and then it falls. And this is something we always see with total revenue, which is that it has some kind of an arch shape, where it goes up, levels out, and goes back down. And this is because demand is finite, and in order to gain another customer, you have to lower the price. If you lower the price, then all your existing customers pay less, and so you lose money per customer. And if you have a very low number of customers, that's worth it. But when you start having lots of customers, the money you lose on your existing customers does not outweigh the money gained from new ones. Uh, so that's your total revenue curve. It has this arch. A marginal revenue curve measures the slope of the total revenue curve. If you speak calculus, it's the derivative of total revenue with respect to Q. And it's the slope. And if we look over here, the slope is positive and it is steep. If you look over here, the slope is positive, but it's a lot less steep. If you look here, the slope is zero. And then if you look over here, the slope is negative and not very steep. And as you shift to the right, it gets more and more negative. Well, that's what's happening on your marginal revenue graph. When it starts very positive and gets lower and lower until it crosses into negative territory. This point here corresponds exactly with this point at the top. Of the, mark of the total revenue curve. That's where the slope switches to negative. All right, back to this. We're talking about a choice of quantity. How many should we produce? Quantity questions, how many questions are answered at the margin? So let's look at marginal profit. 
How much profit does each unit of production make? Marginal profit would be marginal revenue minus marginal cost. For the first four units, the marginal profit is nine minus one is eight dollars each. For the next four units, the marginal profit is seven minus two is five dollars each. For the next four units, marginal revenue is five, marginal cost is three, two dollars each. For the next ones, Marginal revenue is three, marginal cost is four. I lose a dollar on each. And wait a minute, I'm losing money on these last transactions. That means I should stop, because this isn't gonna get any better. My marginal cost is rising, my marginal revenue is falling. My marginal profit will just keep getting more and more negative. So I should be done. Here's the decision rule. Increase Q until the last Q where marginal revenue is greater than or equal to marginal cost. By doing this, a firm choosing a single price will find the quantity that gets the most profitable transactions possible. Let's, let's analyze it. We'll compare marginal revenue and marginal cost. Here, marginal revenue is greater than cost, so our profit's positive. Do it. Likewise for here, Likewise for here. If we move from 12 to 16 units of the good, marginal revenue is less than marginal cost, which means we lost money on the good. We should not do numbers 13 through 16. 12 units was good. 16 units is bad. Let's see if we can verify it. Let's calculate total profits. And I'm going to highlight this row for 12 units of the good in gray. I don't want to distract this, but I want us to remember that that's what we predicted is the good row. So profit, total revenue minus total cost, or if your cost table has average total costs on it, then Q times P minus ATC. Uh, minus 10 at first, no revenue, but a $10 cost. And 22, because there's $36 of revenue and $14 of cost. And there's $64 of revenue and $22 of cost, so 42. And then $84 of revenue and $34 of cost, 50. And 46, and then 30, and then two. 50 is the highest of all of our profit options. Of all of these choices, 50 is the most profit we can get. And how did we solve for it? We increased our Q to the last Q where the money coming in from marginal revenue was greater than or equal to the money going out. So I don't know if this is helpful to you or not. I hope so, but if not, too bad. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Good luck and happy econing.